Okay, why am I wearing a mask? Well, it's because over the past year with the DJI Osmo Action 3 and DJI Osmo Action 4, one of the biggest questions I get is, what's the best microphone to use while moto vlogging? And I think after about a year of contemplating this, I'm finally ready to give you my answer. And so this demonstration is meant to replicate what it's like when you close lav a microphone right by your mouth in your motorcycle helmet while simultaneously riding with really loud bike sounds. So inside this mask, I have a lavalier that is running into my Action 4. Over here, I have my bike sound. But what happens when we start up my bike? Now you can hear that that's really loud. I can't even hear myself talk. But this is what it sounds like if it was just the lavender microphone in my mask. And now here's what it sounds like if I wanted to incorporate some extra bike noise using a second microphone that I have connected with this lav into my action four. Uh, okay, let's stop this. So how did I do all of this? I'm gonna show you right now. Okay, so how did I get this lavalier to go into my Action 3 and Action 4 so cleanly? Uh, in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly the pieces of equipment that I use, why I use them, because there are some specific things that will make a difference in your audio, and how I go about setting up three different scenarios for you to use with your Moto Vlogs. So the first most critical component is the interface between your lavalier mic and your camera and that is the new DJI Osmo Action audio adapter. So this part is critical because it was just released a month ago and it was designed specifically for moto vlogging. And what DJI ended up doing was to make this adapter much less sensitive when it comes to its gain settings of its cameras. Meaning that even at the upper gain settings of the Action 3 and Action 4, your microphone attached to this via the 3.5mm TRS jack will be significantly quieter than what you might have had using other adapters in the past that caused excessive clipping. So yeah, step one, audio adapter into your Action 4. Now when it comes to microphone selections, there are a ton of lavalier mics out there and a lot of people have used a lot of different ones with varying levels and degrees of success. The one I will recommend in this video is this. It is the Rode Lavalier Go 1, not the Rode Lavalier Go 2. And I'll get to specifically why I recommend the Rode Lavalier 1 in a moment, but it is, um, I have the white one. It comes in, it comes in black. It is the first generation of the Rode Lavalier Go series. And you can find it, I think, um, I think it's pretty much discounted now because it's, it's an older mic. The thing about this one is we are not going to use the included foam wind cover. So the Rode Lavalier Go 1 has a much smaller head and subsequently a smaller capsule. And one of the things that will make a big difference in my opinion with your ability to mic yourself up in something like a motorcycle helmet is, uh, is, is this thing. This is a Garfield Hushlav. It is a small piece of foam that has a little hole in the middle that you put basically a sleeve over your microphone. And this is the re one of the reasons why I recommend the Rode Lavalier Go 1. Um, not only is it generally a less sensitive mic, but it fits into this Hushlav by a little bit of a twisting and turning. There we go. And this will take the place of any dead cat or foam wind muff. I go about, yeah, like about halfway through into the sleeve. And then what's nice about this hush lab is that depending on the padding of your helmet, it can squeeze and fit into really tight spaces. And so the lavalier element and the hush lab together don't take up a lot of space in a helmet. They can fit into a lot of little nooks and crannies. And yeah, you don't have to worry about clips or wind protection or any of that stuff, more or less. So on the base level, if you just want a microphone into your helmet with an adapter that can charge your camera, that's this. And um, when I turn mine on, 
and I connect to the microphone, I make sure for audio settings that I have my channel to mono and my gain to minus six. Now that is what worked for me in my example, but depending on how loud you speak, your voice, your helmet, where you put your actual microphone, that could be a little bit higher for you or it could be a little bit lower for you. But minus six is a good starting point for um, everyone and it gives you a bunch of headroom to go up and it also gives you some leeway to go lower if you need to. If you want to record bike noise or ambient noise in addition to using a lavalier inside of your helmet, uh, here's what I recommend you use. I recommend you run a second mic. That's the Deity D4 Duo. And so basically what I recommend is that you run two different mics into your action camera. One for your voice and one specifically for ambient noise or bike sounds. Because I don't think that one lavalier inside of your helmet adequately captures uh, the feeling of, of riding. And so having an external mic that is dedicated to just your engine means that you don't have to worry about compromising on which one you actually want to record. I chose the Deity D4 Duo, and you can probably go with the Deity D4 Mini as well, because it has an input on the side for another audio source. And in this case, it will be our Rode Lavalier Go. So when we disconnect this, we plug our Rode Lavalier Go into the input of our Deity D4 Duo, and our Deity D4 Duo outputs a stereo signal. Because it's a dual capsule, one is left and one is right. And so when you have this switch on the mic switch back and toggled into the back part, you get separate channels. So your lab is gonna be on channel two and your front capsule is going to be on channel one or left and right. Now, when we connect this one cable to our action camera through the audio adapter, we can keep the gain setting at minus six, but we have to change the channel to stereo. This will ensure that we record two discrete channels within our video file. So basically what happens is you have your lav on one channel and your microphone on a second channel. And then in post, you will have to duplicate those channels and mix them as you see fit. Otherwise, you'll just have your voice on one side and the bike on the other side. So there is a little bit of editing with this workflow. But in my opinion, if you want to record audio directly into your camera, uh, into your video file, splitting your tracks in post is probably worth that extra effort. Now, this specific combination of microphone, adapter, and lav mic work really good together because you only have one gain adjustment and that is in the camera. So whatever you adjust your camera gain to will affect both of these microphones. But if you want to use different mics other than these two, you definitely can. All you need is a splitter. So this splitter basically functions the same way that the Duo does with regards to splitting your channels left and right. And so when you plug it in, you now have two different dedicated inputs for different audio sources. So if you don't have uh, or don't want to use something like a Deity D4 Duo or a Deity D4 Mini, and you have a, you know, like a Sennheiser MKE 200, yeah, you can plug in your lav onto one side here, plug in your other microphone into the other side, and you'll be good to go. Now, this is not the only way that you can get good audio with your action cameras. And because I'm not a moto vlogger, I can't actually go out and test this on the road. But based on all of my knowledge about audio, how these cameras work, how these microphones all work with each other in combination with the audio adapter, I think this is basically the solution that a lot of you have been waiting for, especially if you need to run continuous power to your camera because you take long rides, or if you're just tired of having dongle after dongle and clipped audio hanging off your camera. I did test it with the Action 3 and it does work the same way at a minus six gain. And this is what it sounds like with 
the DJI Action Audio Adapter into my Action 3, set to a gain of minus 60 dB. So yeah, I hope that 1000% confirms it for you. And so for you DJI Action 3 owners, I strongly recommend the DJI Audio Adapter because it will help with a lot of your clipping issues that you had in the past with other microphones and other audio adapters. So after a year of being asked what my recommendation for Moto Vloggers is, uh, yeah, this is it. If you have any questions, as always, drop them down in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and we'll talk again real soon.